Hey, Bowtie Nation, Joseph Hogue here. Thank you for joining us for another Monday market update, 9 a.m. Eastern, every Monday morning, get you ready for the week. Stocks to watch, economic news that could guide the markets. We're coming up on the third quarter earnings season and analysts are updating their price targets for the next year. I usually read analyst reports on the toilet because that's pretty much where they belong, but they can be a good opportunity to gauge market expectations and where the market might be wrong and where you can make a lot of money. I found five stocks analysts think can go as much as 123% higher over the next year. We're gonna dig into those numbers, stick around after that, we'll do our Monday market update, the stocks to watch, and the economic news you need to see. Before that, all you out there in the Bowtie Nation know I'm a big believer in SoFi the stock. I'm up 39% on my position, holding for those long-term 10X returns. And part of the faith in the company is from using this all-in-one financial app myself. I have a checking and savings account on SoFi, as well as an investing account and a credit card for my online business. SoFi offers one of the highest rates on savings and customer service is the best I've seen with the online banks. Combine that with no commission investing and lots of other perks and it's all added to my analysis that this is going to be a major bank in the future. But I know it's a pain to start a new bank account and SoFi knows it too. That's why they're offering special cashback rewards and other incentives that are too good to pass up. Use the exclusive link I'll leave in the description below and check out some of these rewards and cashback savings. You'll get a $25 cashback when you sign up for a savings or checking account and up to $250 cash when you sign up for direct deposit. Earn up to 4.5% on your savings. That's 11 times the national average. There's no fee overdraft protection and you get paid early on your direct deposits. You'll also get up to $5,000 cash back when you transfer your investments and get a free share of stock for up to $1,000 each when you fund an investing account with just $10 or more. That free cash back and special incentives is on top of the features and great customer service you get with SoFi. Look for the link below and check that out. Back to our main topic though, and I'm usually pretty rough on Wall Street analysts, mainly because I worked as one and have known so many, and frankly, most of them couldn't find their ass if they were sitting on it, but sometimes it pays to listen, even if only to get stock ideas. The last time I highlighted analyst expectations on their top stock picks back in December of 2020, four of the five stocks beat the market by more than 35% over the next 12 months. Those five stocks produced a return of 65% through the next year, Analysts weren't as good as calling these losers with just four out of the 10 that they said to sell underperforming the market. I wanted to revisit this idea before third quarter earnings start coming out, see what stock analysts are watching and the stocks you might consider buying. Before that, I'm gonna take a bigger picture look on where Wall Street expects the market to be over the next year, the stock sectors that could produce the highest return and where you might question this outlook on your own. I'm gonna be using the FactSet Earnings Insight. It's a great resource, free out every week, updated with analyst estimates, price targets, everything you need to know about the market. Here we are looking at the S&P 500 bottom-up target price versus closing price. This chart back to last year, back to September of 2022. This dark blue line is the bottom-up target price. So this is the target price of all the stocks in the S&P 500 held by analysts. The blue dashed line then is the closing price of the S&P 500. So basically what this shows you is the difference between the actual closing price of those stocks in the S&P 500, that S&P 500 stock market index, and then where analysts think they should be. Okay, the fair value of those stocks in that dark blue line. So you see a gap there between where the stock market is and where, where the analyst price targets are. Now looking at that price difference between analyst price targets and, and the stocks for each sector versus their current price, we get a sense for the potential upside return for each sector. Now we know that analyst target prices are almost always above those current prices we see here in that chart. Analysts are always, always overly bullish on stocks, so, so the companies are gonna give their firm investment banking business. That's just the game that Wall Street plays. But we do see that that gap between the target prices on the top and the current prices on the bottom has widened in this recent sell-off. We saw a similar gap there in September and December of last year, as well as in March of this year. Each time the stock market rallied and narrowed that gap, bought, brought stock prices closer up to those targets. So, while you should never invest based on history alone, that widening gap in prices could see stocks rebound over the next few months. We can also see here in this chart, the S&P 500 sector level bottom up target prices versus closing prices here by sector. So this is the analyst target prices for stocks in each sector 
versus where those stocks are right now on current price gives you an idea of how much analysts think each sector, the stocks in each sector, can rise over the next year. Overall, based on these analyst price targets, Wall Street expects to see the S&P 500, that's the S&P market index here about in the middle, up 19% over the next 12 months. That's all the stocks in the S&P 500, those 500 largest companies in the United States. Analysts have price targets for those that are 19% higher than the current price. Now that would put the stock market at an all-time high, around 5,100 on that index. Within these individual sectors, we can see analysts see the upside in technology here. Information technology stocks are the highest, 22.8%, followed closely by consumer discretionary, that's at 22.7% upside. And then real estate, interesting, really interesting real estate here, 22.6% upside. On the other side of the chart here, we see analysts see seven of the 11 stocks underperforming the S&P 500. So seven st stocks in seven sectors underperforming that average in the S&P 500 with the worst here really in financials at just 15.1% return, utilities 14.2%, and then energy, really interesting here, energy 10.7% return expected over the next year. Now we're not gonna just take these forecasts as gospel, but they can be important an important starting point for our own research question what Wall Street is looking at, what the outlook is, along with what we think is going to happen and where analysts might be wrong Okay, for the overall market to hit that new all-time high and that 19% return on stocks, the economy would need to avoid a recession. Okay, There's just no, no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Inflation will need to come down as the Fed expects, and, and we're probably going to have to avoid another interest rate hike. Okay, Another interest rate hike would send stocks back down, would put more fear into the market and make that 19% very difficult. Consumer spending and the jobs market would also need to remain resilient, and the Fed would need to start previewing rate cuts earlier than expected towards the, uh, towards the middle of next year. This all strikes me as kind of a Goldilocks scenario that's going to be very difficult to manage. Okay, Continued strength in consumer spending and the jobs market is going to make it very difficult to bring inflation down to where the Fed needs it to be to, in order to stop raising rates and start cutting those. While, on the other hand, weakness in either of those, consumer spending or the jobs market, could push us into a recession. So without that drop in inflation, the Fed may hike interest rates again. They're not expected to, but they might if, if consumer spending and jobs and inflation continue to be higher. Um, basically, a 19% return on stocks seems like it would require a lot of things to go right. And some of these are economic forces working in direct opposite of each other. Digging further into these numbers, it's very interesting that stocks in the energy sector have the highest percentage of buy ratings with analysts. 64% of analysts rating this group, the sector, a buy. But also it has the lowest projected returns. Here we see on the Spiders S&P tracker, oil stocks have outperformed the other sectors over the last year. A 24% run in energy stocks versus just 17% for the S&P 500. But they are still cheap on a price multiple basis. We'll look at those valuations next. But at oil at $90 a barrel is likely topped out here, but is also very strongly cash flow positive for these companies, for energy companies. So even if oil does come down and hits oil stocks, you're going to collect those strong dividends. Looking at the left side of the chart here and the preferred sectors from analysts, that any weakness in the economy would hit those analysts' preferred sectors like technology and consumer discretionary. So I think that 20% plus forecast is probably the likeliest areas of mistake here. I do believe we see positive returns though, and I think investors can look to sector valuations for ideas on where the best returns could be. For that, we're going to compare current P.E. ratios against their historical averages. Here we see the S&P 500 sector level forward 12-month P.E. ratios. And what this is, the dark blue bar here is the current P.E. ratios, the forward P.E. ratios. So the price of stocks in each sector divided by the earnings analysts expect them to report over the next year. It's a P.E. ratio valuation, very important valuation measure. The green bar then is the 10-year average of those P.E. ratios. So what you get is a sense of, of how expensive sectors or stocks in each sector are right now. The blue bar versus the green bar. Comparing that P.E. value of stocks in each sector against their 10-year average P.E. ratios then, it's just going to give us an idea of where value can be found in this market. We see here on the left, tech is the most expensive sector at 24 times on that P.E. basis. That's the most expensive relative to its history as well. The stocks of those tech companies in the S&P 500, they're now trading for 24% more expensively than their 10-year average, right around 19.6 times on that price-to-earnings basis. Now, I'm thinking for the kind of returns analysts are forecasting for the tech sector, we would have to see lower interest rates and very strong earnings growth over the next year. And 
I'm just not sure we get it. Here next to that, we see stocks in the consumer discretionary sector are also expensive at 23.8 times earnings, but only just above their 10-year average at 22.9 times PE. So these usually trade right around there in that high PE range. So not historically expensive here. Still, the question is, how much does consumer spending slow when those student loan payments resume and as the job market weakens? We can see here back on the sector tracker, stocks in the sector have underperformed the S&P over the last year, and there is some value to be found here. We can click through to see some of the stocks in the sector here, and shares of Tesla now down 7% over the last year. Nike, even after last week's bounce, just flat over the last year. So there is potential rebound opportunity if consumer spending holds up. Real estate here is the sector I'm most excited about for the next year. I pointed out in Friday's video that there is likely still more pain for real estate stocks, but hedge funds and private equity firms are raising cash to invest next year. Evaluations for REITs here we see are still well under historical averages. And while I hate using the PE ratio for real estate because it's just not a good measure of actual cash flow, Stocks in this sector are trading at 20% discount to the long-term average. As mentioned in Friday's video, I'm still just holding for right now and will start aggressively buying in January ahead of that 2024 rebound. Financials, clear over on the far right of the graph are the bottom three sectors according to analysts, but also among the cheapest stocks in the market. Here we see stocks of financial companies are now trading right around their long-term PE average. The banking crisis this year and the rising deposit costs have pushed stocks to, to a loss of this year with the XLF sector ETF down 2% since January. Banks are closely tied to real estate, so we're going to likely follow that into the next year. Uh, insurance companies should do well with higher interest rates, meaning they collect those higher interest on their cash reserves, but it is going to take another three to six months for banks to start that rally. Another one of the sectors I believe analysts are wrong on. I've been highlighting stocks of utility companies for a few months now. Here we see the current 16.2 times PE multiple is a discount of 8% to the group's long-term average. And the sector is down 11% over the last year. Now, higher interest rates have drawn those yield-seeking and those interest-seeking investors out of utilities, but the valuation is very attractive here. The dividend yields are hard to pass up, and, and these stocks will protect you from any weakness in the overall stock market. So you can use them as a starting point, but I think it's very important to second-guess these analyst forecasts and use them as a, a way to understand what you want to invest in. I agree that real estate should do well over the next year, but would be a little bit more cautious on tech stocks. I disagree with these analyst forecasts and think utilities and financials could do better, even if that rally in financials could take a few months to get started. For individual stocks, the Earnings Insight report does show us two tables here, one showing the stocks with the highest upside according to analyst price targets, and another showing the stocks to avoid. First up here, we see Solar Edge Technologies has an average $290 price target among analysts. That is a 123% upside potential from the current price. Still, the Inflation Reduction Act will benefit solar companies with consumer initiatives. And if we look here on the analysis tab, we can see analyst expectations for growth in this company. And the SEDG here, the Solar Edge Technology, is expected to book 20% sales growth this year and next. The stock is trading very attractively. We can go up here to statistics to see the valuation measures on the stock. Stock is trading very attractively at just 2.1 times on a price to sales basis, which is less than half its long-term multiple. The company has a healthy balance sheet and should do well on long-term, even if it doesn't see that big upside expected by analysts over the next year. Next here, we see Insulate Corporation has a $280 price target for a potential 74% upside. Medical device companies have also been hard hit this year on weakness in hospital services. Hospitals are facing a very tough environment and just cutting back on their spending, which is impacting medical device makers as well as other industries, related industries in healthcare. Insulate sells an insulin delivery system that is also being, may be seeing weakness on the success of diabetic and anti-obesity med medications like Ozempic. This is another growth stock though, with analysts forecasting 20% plus sales growth, but it is quite a bit more expensive. We see here, this is still trading at about eight times price to sales ratio, so I'm not sure the value is just there yet. Third on analyst list, Dexcom has a $150 price target, or about 57% higher from the current price. Now again, this is another medical device company selling glucose monitoring, so probably also seeing that weakness in the diabetes market. Dexcom has a good balance sheet though and enough cash to cover its debt, so there is no big financial risk. Against that though, shares are still terrifically expensive at about 12 times on a price to sales ratio. Analysts are forecasting strong sales growth, but I'd want to see these shares come down before I buy. Analysts are also watching FMC Corporation. It's given up the last six years of returns just in the last 12 months, but the average analyst price target of $117 a share is 77% higher on this agricultural sciences company. 
Sales are down 10% this year, but expected to rebound 7% next year, and shares are attractively priced at about 10 times on a PE basis. I do like the long-term demand picture for agricultural agricultural inputs here, and the company pays a 3.5% dividend, so investors are going to get paid while that price rebounds. Rounding out the top five here, we find United Airlines with a $73 price target, a 72% upside from the current price, but I think this is a pretty bold call considering higher oil prices, a weakening consumer, and just the potential for wage issues for this company. The Pilots Union just ratified a new four-year contract for a 40% pay increase that is going to hit the bottom line. The company is likely to see labor costs jump for its flight attendants and mechanics as well. The stock is trading right around its long-term price-to-sales valuation, though it is a discount on that PE basis, but I'm just not sold on this one. Now, in the rest of the top 10 stocks, according to these analyst price targets, we do see Moderna, ResMed, Etsy, Alaska Air, and MGM Resorts, all with upsides of 60% plus to those targets. With three medical device companies, we see analysts do expect a rebound for healthcare next year. Analysts also see consumer spending holding up with four of these top 10 companies in that consumer discretionary sector. Looking at these bottom 10 stocks, there doesn't seem to be any sector trends in these stocks with the lowest return to, to price targets. All 10 of here are trading above those targets. That's why you see the difference is negative here, implying a negative return for investors, but are from many in industries. So it's specific company weakness we see analysts seeing rather than those industry headwinds. We see here on the top, Expeditors International offers air and ocean freight. So maybe analysts see business demand for logistics week. Consolidated Edison would extend that weakness we've seen in utilities this year. But if we get any rebound in utilities, then Con Ed is going to benefit as well. Robert Half is likely to see weakness on that weaker jobs market as companies just cut their temp staffers before their permanent positions. So RHI is also going to see less contracts on that. Amgen here is interesting because it could be rolling out its own anti-obesity drug within the next year, and that could boost these shares. So overall, I wouldn't bet against any of the bottom 10 stocks in the analyst forecast, but there are a few in that top 10 list that could be worth a look. I want to highlight some of the stocks I'm watching this week. First up, Levi Strauss, ticker LEVI. It's going to be reporting its earnings on Thursday and could finally have some good news for investors. Analysts expect the company to post a 32% drop in earnings to just $0.27 cents a share on a drop of 3.6% revenue. We can see that here in the analysis tab for analyst expectations. The good news is that next quarter is expected to return the company to earnings growth. We see here next quarter analyst expectations for $0.47 cents a share. That would be after, uh, after $0.27 cents this quarter and $0.34 cents the year before. So we are returning to positive earnings growth for the company. The shares are now trading at just 11 times this year's expected earnings. We could see favorable news on inventory restocking. That would be mimicking news we got from Nike on Friday that saw that stock up 10% on its earnings. Even if management cannot give investors some good news here, this low valuation on shares of Levi Strauss and a 3.5% dividend yield makes that risk reward a good one for Levi. Also watching Main Street Capital, ticker MAIN. It's going to go ex-dividend on Thursday, which means if you want this month's dividend, you need to own the shares by close of market on Wednesday. If you're going to buy the stock, if you want that monthly dividend, buy it before the close of market on Wednesday to get that dividend. It's going to go ex-dividend on Thursday. Main Street is one of my favorite monthly dividend stocks. We just ranked our best 20 monthly dividend stocks in a video over the last couple of weeks. Check that out, the top 20 dividend stocks that pay monthly dividends. Talking about real estate earlier, WP Carry, ticker WPC, has fallen 15% since mid-September as all real estate stocks really sell off on those higher interest rates. The stock is now paying a sustainable 7.6% dividend yield and it's one of my favorite REITs for its property diversification. The diversified real estate company is expected to post positive growth in funds from operations that FFO measured this year, rare among the REITs for this year, and is only paying 62% of its FFO to cover that dividend. So very sustainable, means the dividend should be safe. And as discussed on Friday with our real estate stocks, real estate stocks could have a very good year in 2024. If you need that bigger picture idea, back on the spider sector tracker here, we see over the last five days, stocks in just three of the 11 sectors did close higher last week, but an outperformance in tech and communication services really saved the broader market from falling further. Those rate sensitive sectors like consumer staples, real estate and utilities once again lagged the market on just that surge in interest rates, but are looking very attractive on a valuation basis, especially for the stability and cash flows for the consumer staples and utilities. Looking at the year-to-date picture here, we see stocks in the utility sector have they had their worst year since 2008. We can go here, we see stocks in the utility sector now down 16% this year. If we look at annual S&P sector performance, 
clear back in 2008. So stocks in the utility sectors were down 29% that year, that year, along with the crash in all sectors, pretty much. But we see it has not been this bad since almost since 15 years. And that is versus an average return. If we scroll down here, an average return of 7.4% over that period. Now, higher interest rates over the next month could still weigh on stocks in the sector, but we're seeing a once in a generation opportunity for this traditionally safe sector. Utility stocks are trading for a discount of 15% on that long-term PE ratio and pay a 3.3% dividend yield on average. For investors that want to lock in that stable, long-term returns, this is your opportunity. The Select Sector Spiders Utilities Fund, the XLU, is going to give you that broad exposure to the group or individual names like Dominion and American Electric probably offer higher upside potential. The last-minute agreement to fund the government through November should be a positive catalyst for stocks in the early part of this week. More importantly, though, funding the government means we're going to see those economic data releases this week and next that could help bring those interest rates down and spark a rebound in stocks. Had the government shut down, economic reports would have been delayed. Instead, we will get the monthly jobs report here on Friday, which is expected to show 170,000 jobs created last month. That would be versus just 187,000 in the month prior. We're also going to get that normally scheduled consumer price index, the CPI, on the 12th. If consumer prices follow the PCE report reported just last week, we should see a confirmation that inflation is coming down. The combination of this weaker jobs report and trending lower inflation is all the Fed is going to need to hold rates steady. That big hurdle in stocks lately has been the idea that the Fed may not be done raising rates, so they're shifting expectations to no rate hikes and maybe even rate cuts earlier than expected that should send stocks back up into a bull market. Look for that link below and get up to $275 cash back when you sign up for a savings or checking account on SoFi. Or click on the video to the right for the 20 monthly dividend stocks ranked from best to worst. Don't forget to join the Let's Talk Money community by tapping that subscribe button and clicking the bell notification.